Alright guys, so this episode was actually inspired by a recent uh, excursion. Why don't you tell us what happened? We went to Fogo the Chow for a birthday celebration. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, it, it, Fogo the Chow is great. Always, always will be great. And you can never go wrong with Fogo. You, you, you only go to Fogo the Chow for two things, food and drink. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, why are you going? Exactly. Get off the property. <laughs> Precisely. And off Fogo the Chow's menu, their drink menu as it were they have a plethora of concoctions mm -hmm. which by the way to side note a bit uh the caprahinas were on point yeah. they have a drink called the jorge sour uh, yes. uh peak mixology mm -hmm. and they also had two old fashions on there their mm -hmm. classic old fashioned and a caramel, uh, a caramelized pineapple old fashioned. And that is the crux of the video today. Now, the classic old fashioned was fire, mm -hmm. based on what I tasted. Mm -hmm. The caramelized pineapple old fashioned, not so much. Mm -hmm. And it, it bothered me because there was such a drastic there was such a drastic difference between the classic one and this pineapple one mm -hmm. and you know i was thinking about what i tasted and how what could have possibly been wrong with it mm -hmm. and there were several things that i came up with one being that the drink in and of itself was uh, heavily diluted with ice. Mm -hmm. So whatever was in there was fifty percent water by now, mm -hmm. and that's just and that's just a theory. Well, not really a theory because the drink did have ice in it, but it's just one of several things that I was thinking about. I was also wondering, you know, did they even, were they missing some ingredients that could make this better? Mm -hmm. But needless to say, the drink in and of itself was almost flavorless. Right. Like, you could tell that there were things in there, mm -hmm. but as far as, you know, there being something to actually, that your taste buds can actually grasp onto, it just was not there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, me being me, I was thinking, I gotta fix this. <laughs> or, at, or at least attempt to fix this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that those words coming out of my mouth, you know, makes me seem like I'm a know-it-all and everything like that. But, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to throw shade at, you know, the bartenders at Fogo to Chow or anything like that. Because the other drinks were great. It's just that this one, we don't know what was going on with it. So, based off of based off of the recipe that they give you on the menu for this drink, I wanted to one re try to recreate it as close as possible to my to well, my stuff, and then two fix it. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are now. Mm -hmm. I know that went a long way, but you know here we are. Now I do have to specify this as well. The recreation won't be a 100% recreation. Mm -hmm. In the drink, on the menu, they specify what whiskey they use. They use a rye whiskey. Oh, a rye whiskey. Mm -hmm. I want to say it's a uh, whistle pig. Yes. Whistle pig piggyback or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. I'll put it right here so that you guys have the exact name that's what they use for their for their rye whiskey mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we're not gonna do that today we're gonna do uncle nera's rye right a uh, fairly new product mm -hmm. um for one thing we wanted to taste it ourselves mm -hmm. uh, for another thing you know if i'm gonna spend 65 dollars on a 
whiskey. A, a bottle of whiskey. I might as well honor Black History Month while it was still around. Now, technically, this video is coming out after Black History Month, but we bought and made this on Black History yeah, exactly. Month. Exactly. So. so shut up. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna start with the recreation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so and, uh, the first problem that I. Well, the second problem, because the first problem I already, I already pointed out, it was diluted with water. But the second problem, I think, is why the drink failed, mm -hmm. is because they went old-fashioned, they went uh, Wisconsin-style old-fashioned riff with this drink, mm -hmm. and I think it, I think it was, it's what complicates the drink. So, here's a, here's the thing. I don't know if you have this on you, but do you have the recipe? Let's, I think we should read off the recipe so people know what we're dealing with first and then get into the knit and the grit. I haven't read bottles in a while, but while I'm opening this, I, I took a glance at it. You know, this this, this uncle <clears throat> this uncle near the rye is pretty new. And I'm looking at what's on the back of the bottle. And it says, this was a lofty experiment that worked. The result of this 100% rye mash bill matured and used Uncle Nearest barrels before being bottled at 100 proof keeps with our tradition of creating some of the most awarded whiskeys in the world. This is rye whiskey elevated, hitting every mark with its rich flavor profile, incredible balance of spices, and extraordinarily smooth finish. Can't wait to put it in my mouth. I know, crazy. Okay, so I have the recipe mm -hmm. for the caramelized pineapple old fashioned. Mm -hmm. Whistle pig piggyback 100% rye. Mm -hmm. That's like 50 to 60 dollars at the uh, liquor store. Mm -hmm. And that's their cheapest because like the, the liquor store we went to had like several mm -hmm. whistle pigs. But that and specific they were whistle like, pig. Mm -hmm. That yeah. specific one. Like, pay attention when you guys go in the liquor store and read this. If you want to recreate this specific drink. Mm -hmm. um, muddled caramelized pineapple, orange Luxardo cherry. Now, I'm going to stop right there. The drink in and of itself did not have an orange in there. Mm -hmm. A slice of orange in there. They had an orange peel. So I gotta wonder, did they muddle muddle the orange peel with the with the uh, pineapple, mm -hmm. or did they just express the oil in there? They might have expressed the oil, but it's a Wisconsin style, so they would so they would have had to have muddled a piece of orange, and I didn't and I didn't see orange. I didn't see orange. Pe it wasn't an orange slice. It was literally an orange peel. Mm -hmm. So I think they just muddled the the pineapple and expressed orange oil. We're not gonna do that with the with the orange, mm -hmm. mainly because I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> I think, considering the fact that I had to recreate the caramelized uh, pineapple, that's the bulk of the flavor. Exactly, and I think that will get lost in there. Another thing I'm noticing: no bitters. Yeah. So, we'll see what happens. Uh, you got your caramelized, caramelized uh, pineapple. So then tell them how you did that. You just, I took some chunks of pineapple, uh, put them on the skillet, mm -hmm. threw some sugar on them, let that, let that cook mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. until it got brown mm -hmm. and you know you get this magic right here and pay attention to it don't like walk away from the stove or whatever like you walking away from the stove while you cooking you're not cooking exactly you trying to start a fire um i will say as an added bonus the house smelled like bakery when i got home after you made that and that is awful okay well i'm glad you enjoyed that i'm just saying there's a plus to caramelize now Pineapple. I don't know how much pineapple you should put in here to muddle. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna be a bit conservative in like half a bar spoon. Okay. Which, you know, looks like this for anybody that cares or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
I guess at the same time, I can start on the recreation as well so that we're making the drinks in tandem. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do for the recreation, I'm gonna do it the traditional old fashioned rib. Mm -hmm. So there's no muddling to be involved. Mm -hmm. And what I'm gonna do here, instead of just pineapple chunks, which was another reason why I caramelized the pineapple, I wanted to get that syrup that comes with it. Okay. So in place of the sugar cube that you would use for an old fashioned, or the simple syrup that some people do, I'm gonna use the syrup from here. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna do about two bar spoons of this syrup. That should equal about one sugar cube. One sugar cube or a half ounce of simple syrup. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna put that at the bottom. Okay, you stay right there. They also had a cherry in there, mm -hmm. uh, Luxardo cherry, and it looked muddled to me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you do that in a old fash in a Wisconsin style old fashioned. So that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, you know, it's sounding like. They express the oils with that. Uh, I'm thinking so too. And that the pineapple was supposed to replace the orange in that scenario. But they still wanted to harken back to an old fashioned, so they put a mm -hmm. orange peel in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're just gonna muddle. Which I mean. <laughs> I mean, you fade out with such a different time. And I'm gonna put it this way I'm not, if you like Wisconsin style old fashions, then you know that's cool. But I, but I honestly think this was the big contributor to why this drink didn't work when they put this pineapple riff on it. Mm -hmm. Like right now, I got some of the pineapple mess on there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that goes away forever. Okay. Back to you. If you can hand me the bitters. Two ounces of your rye. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna stir.
I will say this, it is looking like it did in the, um, at the restaurant. Okay. Now at the same time, we're gonna do our eyes. like to say this. What would you like to say? Essentially, both of the drinks are done. I'm gonna garnish this one. This one, essentially, the garnish is already in there because I muddled it into the... became a thing is because of the fact that um muddling those ingredients in there makes it sweeter and with the regular old-fashioned your your traditional old-fashioned your sweetness is dictated by how much sugar or simple syrup goes in and being honest with you it's a it's a liquor forward drink so you should be tasting just you should be tasting the liquor with the sugar and the bitters to back up the flavor. If I'm being 100% honest with you, outside of the orange mm -hmm. peel, I think you did this better than they did. I think you made their traditional one better. Now, you know, did we use fancy ice or any razzmatazz? No. But, Neither did but I they. like the taste of this. I can taste, I can taste the ingredients. The whisk, the the whiskey is to the forefront, and then also too. To be fair, we're using two different. We're using a totally different type of whiskey. The Uncle Nearest could also just be elevating it. That's fair because. Uncle Whiskey, uh, uh, Uncle Whiskey. If there's an, actually a dope name for a whiskey, mm, <laughs> if there's anyone out there who has an uncle named Whiskey, you mm -hmm. tell them, see mm -hmm. me. And you know what? If, if you know if, what? 
that that name, if, if someone can capitalize on it before we can, you got it. <laughs> Uncle Whiskey, that's pretty dope. But um, Uncle Nearest could have totally different flavors and spices compared to, I was gonna call it Piggly Wiggly, um, Whistle, Pig. Whistle Pig. And that's no shot on Whistle Pig, that's no shot on Uncle Nearest either. But now I will say this, where's my phone? Because I want to confirm and make sure of something. Mm -hmm. We had that, uh... Oh, well, never mind. That's a shame. What? Because the Jorge Sour used uh, Woodford Reserve bourbon. Yeah. I thought the Whistle Pig was in that, too. Mm -hmm. And because the because the sour was great, mm -hmm. and if you continue to look, I think you'll find that their traditional um, old fashioned did not use whistle pig. It used not pre guac, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that could have also been a factor. Like maybe whistle pig, whistle pig probably has a different flavor. But I like this. This is actually really good. Okay. And before I make my comparison, you try that one. to me why it's better you get you you get all the spices from the uncle nearest in here plus the taste of the syrup okay so this is the you see how it's a more fuller version of the one we had at uh yeah but a Wisconsin Old Fashioned done right, you're gonna taste, it's going to be sweet. You're gonna get all of the, all of the flavors from the orange mm -hmm. and the cherry that's muddled in there. Mm -hmm. Plus, and the whiskey will kind of play, not a backseat, but it will even, even it out on this drink. This one, this one, the whiskey is a little bit forward, but it's still sweet. Yeah, I think we fixed it. Mm -hmm. The original way. It, it is very good. Now taste that one. Yeah. Okay, I see what you mean. Whiskey all the way. Mm -hmm. The pineapple mm -hmm. is in the back mm -hmm. because it's just the syrup. Mm -hmm. The bitters help bring out the flavors of both ingredients. Mm -hmm. Like that is that is a legit and 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 I know it's because of the Uncle Nearest. I'm I'm almost even thinking the Uncle Nearest is enhancing the caramelized pineapple mm -hmm. syrup. That being said, mm -hmm. could this be done with the whistle pig? And I'm thinking no. I, I but don't want trash whistle. Yeah, I don't want to trash pig, whistle. I'm thinking pig. no either because I think Uncle Nearest has has flavors in it that's, that's different from whistle pig. Yeah, that's differentiating it from whistle pig. I, I'm thinking this may be a thing where look. No shade on this, but I'm not worried about this anymore. I want, I'm thinking down the line, we may have to do this one again, but do one with Whistle Pig and one with Uncle Nearest mm -hmm. and see which one tastes better. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to get a couple of paychecks up because that Whistle Pig is pricey. And yeah. to buy Uncle Nearest again too, unless we just don't drink anymore of this one until we are ready to do it. And that ain't and, and say <laughs> And I'll say this too. 
maybe the 100 plus dollar whistle pig bottles that we saw at the liquor store may be the better option for this type of drink if you're if you're using whistle pig but yeah. the whole point of it is to use a hundred percent rye it's fair enough but usually the higher price bottles are the better bottles as it were the better or quality that's, or, or that's the idea yeah just theories and stuff that i'm thinking about and throwing out there be that as it may uh don't get this drink at Bogo the Jack. <laughs> um, unless, unless your bartender is on the ball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even then, or, 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 so I'll be fair to this too. Tell your bartender to go light on the ice mm -hmm. if you order this drink. Because I actually think that, I actually think that might be the biggest factor to why mm -hmm. it wasn't it wasn't as good. It, it may be the ice, and I don't, and, and here's the thing as well, whistle pig, that, that particular whistle pig may not stand up to dilution, mm -hmm. to ice dilution mm -hmm. really well. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason why I say that it was probably the ice is because we had him make another old, another traditional old fashioned, because we already had one, ice. one on the table. And it was light on the ice, and it tastes better than the first traditional old fashioned they made, and that one was good. Exactly. So all that tells me is it was just that he got a little handy with the ice. That's all. Mm -hmm. That's all. But you're right. Whistle pick may not stand up to dilution. That it, it may it, water dilution may sap its flavor because even this Uncle Nearest. We've been going for a minute. We've been talking. This ice has melted, and I'm st I, it's still I'm still in flavor town. Yeah. Like this one is really flavorful. Like it's something about it's something about the whiskey mixed with the pineapple that really set it off. So, a little bit of peeking behind the scenes for you guys. Mm -hmm. The original, we were planning on doing a, just a talk, uh, we were going to do a video in which we discuss how we make an old fashioned. Mm -hmm. Because everybody else out there, they've made a video on the old fashioned and they've, you know, shared their recipe on how to make an old fashioned. Mm -hmm. Then we went to this birthday dinner mm -hmm. and things changed. Yeah. And I'm not gonna lie, I think we need to change an ingredient in the way we make old fashioned. And I mean, we need to trade out the, the babe liquor because I'm thinking this is the new old fashioned. So, <laughs> real, real talk, I am gonna make a I'm, I am gonna make a old fashioned in the way that we make it and try this out and see mm -hmm. how it is, mm -hmm. and then compare it to the other base liquor that we used before. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, the drink is gonna taste good depending on one what what liquor you use, mm -hmm. and two what your preference, what your flavor preference is. I mean, hell, you could make an old fashioned with uh, Fernand Branca. That probably wouldn't be a wise thing to do, but if you like Fernand Branca like that, you know, you do you. Yeah. And everybody else mind they business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That should be on a shirt. You do you and everybody else mind they business. Mm -hmm. That's something else you can have. No, you can't have that for free. I'm taking it. That's mine. I'm putting, <laughs> I'm putting that on fucking shirt. Th th those were good. I really liked those. The the recreation, the recreation was good because I actually think you improved on what was what was in fairness to Fogo a great idea. Mm -hmm. A 
great idea. Something else we gotta consider too that I didn't think about mm -hmm. is uh, how they could, because they say caramelized pineapple, mm -hmm. were they actually caramelized pineapple, or did they just take a pineapple, put some fire on it for a little bit, and then fuck with it? That's fair, they would be like, what, how did they cook their pineapple before they it? Yeah, that's, that's a quantity. There's just so many factors in, you know, determining what could have gone wrong with that drink and that, you know, you can't really pin it down on one specific thing. Mm -hmm. Like, we can talk about the Whistle Pig, but, like, uh, was it really Whistle Pig's fault? Even a little bit? I will argue there were several, I will argue there was a, a plethora of things that went wrong that combined to go wrong with that drink. Mm -hmm. I think under the right scenarios, Whistle Pig can make a very good cocktail. But that's with any liquor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like we, you know, stated before, it, it's looking like Whistle Pig may not hold up to I well that particular Whistle Pig may not hold up to ice dilution. Right, right, right. But with that said and done, one last thing I want to say, guys, just go to Fogo the Child, and you know I know you go in there for the beat, mm -hmm. but you know, try their cocktails. If you just go there to drink, you will not be shamed. As yeah. a matter of fact, and you won't be disappointed either. Exactly. Because exactly. like I said, all the other cocktails, that Caprino was good, mm -hmm. that Jorge Sour was good too. I honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that, because I ordered the Jorge Sour first, and if it wasn't for the fact that I just really wanted a Cabernet, I probably would have got another Jorge Sour. Because because in my opinion, yeah, it, was yeah, that, it, was, it was it was it was that 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 drink was the stuff of legend. Like, <laughs> I really liked it. Yeah, I may just be overhyping the drink, but I don't think so. Uh, like I really liked it. I think that's one of their best drinks that they've made. And I want to say we were told that it was their most popular drink on the menu, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Probably. But it was good nonetheless. Mm -hmm. And you know, Fogo the Child is a good place to go eat anyway. Exactly. Especially if you like Brazil. There are other Brazilian spots. You know, we, we also go to a, a little Brazilian spot in the cut somewhere. And we're not going to mention to anybody because yeah, it's mine and I want to keep it. Exactly. <laughs> plus, plus, come visit us. Come, plus, wait and come visit us. Exactly. And then we'll take you. We, we might just take you. Mm -hmm. you know, one day we might just, you know, be hanging out with us. We might just randomly say, let's, let's, let's go get some Brazilian food. Jump in the car. Let's go. <laughs> get some Brazilian food. Oh look, it's next to this liquor store. You know how I feel about liquor. <laughs> but with that said and done, I think we're done here. Uncle Nearest, fine job once again. Mm -hmm. You always hold up. This is our first time having the ride. And usually when we when we test when we do something new, we always test it first. But we just jumped right in, knowing it was gonna be shit. <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> we just jumped right in, knowing it was gonna be the shit. And uh, we weren't wrong. That's, that's the kind of confidence that Uncle Dears can stand on. Mm -hmm. Uncle Whiskey, we are about to make that happen. But anyway, I think that's going to do it for this episode of Drink Tales. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Hit that bell so that you're notified of all content coming to the channel. We'll be back. It, uh, it's yeah, probably going to be like a cartoon character or something. Yeah, we're, we're not probably going to do a Woody Woodpecker drink or yeah. something. I don't know. Or Droopy. I think we could get something out of Droopy. Like a Droopy Salty Dog. Let's do that. Maybe. But, yeah. I don't, Droopy's not even relevant, so I don't even know why we would. Yeah, exactly. But, but like and subscribe, hit that bell uh, so that you're notified whenever we put up new episodes. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, we're on those things. You should be checking us out there too. Um, but yeah, we'll be back. And we haven't traveled anywhere in a while, but that won't be the next episode, but we'll be back. So until next time, everybody.